IMG, Motley, VPIT positive, maybe my favorite combination. What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And today's video, well, I'm filming this on Labor Day. You already got a video I put up from uh, that I shot over the weekend. So this video is technically a Labor Day video, I guess you could say, but it's, uh, Pablo came in just for a couple hours. He was supposed to go fishing, they canceled his fishing trip. So we got a couple of little videos in the meantime while he was there and um, filmed a couple of things. I do want to mention before we get to the little hodgepodge of uh, snake stuff that I showed you from my collection, that uh, I want to just give high praises to Dave Kaufman for that amazing job he did with the Ball Python movie. If you haven't seen it, head over to Dave Kaufman's Reptile Adventures on YouTube and watch it. He spent an awful lot of time editing. You, I, you guys have no idea if you've never edited a video. That video probably was hours of footage that he compiled, put together a coherent story. And I, I saw some people criticizing it. I don't even know what they're criticizing. The problem with, with the expectations of that movie were that people wanted to see morphs. There's no morphs. There's, there's only a couple morphs in, 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 um, in Africa. You know, obviously, the, you know, they don't have 6,000 gene morphs combinations like we do here. That's not what the movie was about. The movie was about where ball pythons come from. Where do they live in the wild? What do they eat in the wild? Why are they sometimes in trees? Why are they in holes sometimes? Do they live in termite mounds? All these questions were answered. He did a great job with his video. I thought great investive gative reporting on his part plus he had a lot of political rigmarole to deal with over there because everything is like payoffs and you know they don't want to give you visas and they make you wait you have to be very very patient if you're going to be able to get anything done over there and uh, Dave did a great job with that and you know what uh, let's let me show you a little clip from the video uh, from the movie just to get you your appetite wet and then we found something miraculous this isn't just a place where ball pythons are living in burrows. This is an actual ball python nursery, and the females are still coiled on their eggs. We were careful to only excavate a small portion so that we could see inside without disturbing any of the entrances or exits of this burrow. All right, I'm gonna get a temperature reading to see what temperature ball python eggs are incubating out here in the wild. All right, so you can see the egg right there. I'm just gonna give it a zap here. And look at that, 89.1 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 31.5 degrees Celsius. And that is the incubation temperature of wild ball python eggs. 89 degrees is exactly what we are told to incubate our eggs in our collections. And 89 degrees Fahrenheit is exactly the temperature that these wild ball python eggs are incubating at. Like I said, Dave was in the, in the trenches over there. We got to see what ball pythons look like on eggs in the ground. They like to use you know other snake holes, burrows, they don't really live in termite mounds like we thought. And sometimes they go in trees when it rains. You know, we learned a lot. We also learned that the African soft furred rats, which we think are their preferred uh, food source over there, are really just lab rats over there. They're not even like the stuff they find in the wild. They'll eat anything. They're opportunistic eaters. They'll eat birds. They'll eat rodents. They'll eat anything that's over there. And that's, that's what I expected pretty much. So thank you, Dave. Great job. You know, I saw Dave at uh, Daytona Reptile Show. He told me that he was, uh, his next movie, he was thinking about going to South America and doing a, a movie on boas, which I think would be freaking phenomenal, man. That, that's, that, we, all us boa breeders would love to see that, I know that. And I'm sure, I told him to take Vin Russo with him because you got to bring one of the best of the best, you know, and Vin knows localities. He's been in the field before. Bring Vin Russo with you. I think that would be an awesome video. All right, guys, let's head into that snake room and see what we got. <laughs> What's up, guys? Uh, I got my Boland's Python here, and there's a reason I'm holding him, even though I love holding him, and he's in sh he's in shed though. But we are installing lights today. Uh, we're finishing, we're trying to finish this installing lights. Pablo's fishing ship was canceled on Labor Day, so he came in here like a good guy. And look at this. Look how great these these look with the lights in them. Look at look at my albino alf python. Even ignore the dirty glass, but we can see her so much better. Um, now that the uh, the lights are in, we have 
LED lights, actually, this was Pablo's idea to put two 33 inch lights for a six inch cage, which worked out really, really well because there's no dead spots where there's like, it's too dark or something like that. And you can really see the animals. Now, ultimately I'm gonna be putting these olive pythons potentially in an outdoor enclosure I'm building for them. So they may not be staying here, but whatever we decide to put in here has got some nice lighting now. Um, he's gonna be doing these guys now, which is the Boland's Python, the, the Diamond Python. I might even put some diamonds in these big cages to give them some move, room to move around a little bit. And then in the other room, the blue tongues are gonna to get lit up. You saw the water monitor cages already lit, and then we're gonna eventually get to the berms and some of the big boa cages, the six footers in there. And that was gonna look phenomenal. I'm I'm so it's like it's like I'm so excited, it's like I got another it's like I got new stuff in that I didn't even know I had, and it's just because now we're being lighting these cages and we're actually able to see what's in there much better. The only bad thing is you gotta clean the glass a lot more now because <laughs> you can see how dirty it is when there's when there's actual lights in there. All right. Let's put this bowl in the back, and I, I, you can see his, his gray eye. He's definitely in shed, and uh, so we're going to leave him alone. He's, he's got the best, per of all the snakes I had, this, this snake has probably got the greatest personality of all time, and uh, he's just likes to be held, he chilled, and everything like that. I'm still looking for, well, I, I, I've located a female, and I'm in negotiations, but the, uh, the person I'm in negotiations with is not so negotiable. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes eventually. Hopefully we will get a female at some point, and uh, try to breed these things down the road. Obviously not too many people have been successful with it, but you know, uh, I, I like uh, challenges. I really just want to put these guys, a male and a female, in a display cage and just leave them there. If they breed, they breed, I don't even care. But I just want to put them in there because I think they're just like some of the coolest snakes I have. And look at that, jet black snake. They don't get too thick. They're arboreal, they climb, you know, they're just, they're just the cool, cool snakes. They're just very expensive right now. So we'll see. If we sell a few boas, maybe we'll do it. All right, let's, uh, let's let Pablo get back to work and I will show you the final product. All right, I'm showing you two cool snakes at the same time that I love. This is a super micro scale, which is a scaleless animal. That's head clown that I produced this year. This girl might actually be going up for sale soon if anyone's interested in getting into the super micro scale project, super micro scale clown project that is. I have not produced a visual yet, but I've seen them. They're awesome. This is a, she's really, really nice. She's been eating very well. And this is one of my favorites from 2022, except she doesn't want to show us. He doesn't want to show us. I should say this is a banana purple pied or banana purple panda pied, I should say purple panda pie but she doesn't want to show us her purple <laughs> so she's a super black pastel banana pie so she's got she's solid purple we can see her she doesn't want to, she's got a little on her tail and she does not want to participate right now so she's ruining my video yes she is yeah you are you can't hide my scaleless, or I should say my super micro scale, scaleless hand clown will have to carry the show today. <laughs> She's beautiful. Love it. She just shed. I don't know. I think she just shed the other day. They shed a lot, these um, scaleless animals, though. All right, let's see. I think I got the. Oh! I got our purple panda pied out here. Come here. Show off. Pen, uh, all right, I'm gonna leave her out here, see if she opens up. All right, here's my uh, panda pied, which is a super black pastel pied. She unfortunately slugged out for me this year. I was very unhappy with that, but she's gorgeous, love her. She was a little on the young side. She just wasn't ready, I guess. I really wanted to try to produce some more panda pieds with her. Uh, we're gonna have to wait till next year. I was actually trying to prove out a male that I thought might have been Panda pie too. She's cool because she's got a lot of like little black spots on her too that are kind of like pigment spots, but they're they're cool because they're like almost like part of the whole super black pastel thing. And she's solid. I mean, that's this is one of my favorite snakes, no doubt, in the ball python realm. Now I'm trying to get the. I wanted to give you the contrast of the purple panda pied to the panda pied, but. This girl is just not having any part of participating today with, with the program. You know, she's like, nope, I'm on strike. 
You're not paying me enough. I am not doing this, and that's all there is to it. Uh, she obviously has you know, only a couple spots of purple, but her tail. And that's typical of the uh, the super black pastel pies with panda pies. They don't have a lot of. They're mostly high whites. If you see a, a low white, it usually means that it's it's a head head pie with a ringer or something like that. So you can see the purple there that's taking the place of the black because the banana gene turns the black to purple. You see it more in the head, if I can get her to just show her head a little bit. She really does not want any part of this though. All right, there she goes. There she is. So that, that black turned to like this purplish color. And I think that's where all we're gonna get from her today. She's not gonna show us any more than that. So two variations. The only difference being that this, this little guy has the, uh, the banana gene in it. This doesn't. He has a really nice little boy that I, I think I'm gonna be putting up because I have a, a few of these guys. This is a banana and she orange dream, possible yellow belly, het tri-stripe, het pie. So here's, if you wanna get into the tri-stripe pie project, which I don't even know if there's any people even in it right now. <laughs> I don't know if there's any been produced. That is tri-stripe pies. I'm trying to make them hopefully this coming season, but probably have to wait another year because I don't think I, my mail is going to be big enough, but these guys were just produced in the beginning of this year, so I don't think they're going to be ready. Maybe mid-season they'll be ready uh, next year. But this boy is beautiful and tons of potential, and I'm really interested to see what, you know, banana, Enchi Orange Dream, tri stripe pies are going to look like. I don't know. Maybe they won't look great. Maybe they'll look incredible. I'm super excited. I, I love tri stripe And I always wonder what tri stripe pies would look like. Will it lose the tri striping Will it be more intense? You would think it would be a little reduced, but it might give it a kind of interesting pattern with the way the pied would break up the pattern, you know? So, we'll find out. Here's a beautiful hypo pie combo that I produced this past year. Actually, just two months ago. This is obviously hypo pie. Looks yellow belly to me as well. With the little kind of jagged edges there around the pattern. Question is, is she orange dream? I don't know. That's that's a hard one. That might We may have to prove that out through breeding. She definitely is, I would definitely say, hypo, pied, yellow belly. And we'll have to see on the orange dream. I don't know. Usually the head, you can tell a little bit, but she's a little stuck shed on her. She does have like a little orangey glow to her, but I'm not sure. When I don't know something, I don't know. I don't pretend I know. Look at that little smiley face though. Pretty cool. Beautiful, beautiful girl. Here's my super black pastel head pied boy that we produced a couple months back. He's been sold since the day I posted my first video on him. He's just, uh, it's been so hot where my customer lives that I can't ship him out yet. So I'm just feeding him and bulking him up for him. He's looking really nice. He's gonna be going out soon. Actually, he might be going out with a friend too. Look at that beautiful boy. Oh, I love that. Look at that white belly. Look at that white belly. With the little white creeping up there. It almost you could tell this thing is is wants to be a panda pie so bad. And I'm sure it will make panda pies one day for the lucky guy who's bringing it home. All right, I'm going to leave this one alone. I forgot I almost had this one. It's still here. Here's a nice leopard lavender, or what I believe to be a leopard lavender albino. Starting to get some purples in. And when they're first born, they're very white looking, but this little girl is starting to get some nice purples. This uh, might go up for sale if anyone's interested. You want to get into the dark morphs with lavender albino look amazing. This, this girl's really, really spectacular. Probably should keep her. Look at that, look at that. Look at that glowing pattern on the bottom, the bottom portion of her and that ventral surface, it's kind of like running up the top like flames almost. That is pretty, pretty cool. 
Lavender albino has got so much potential. I mean, Justin Kabilka's done so much with lavender albino, but those dark morphs like leopard and blackhead, they do great with um, the lavender albino. Wow. All right, if anyone's interested in this female, let me know. Can't keep everything. This mild mannered pied here, which is, he's a beautiful pied at that happens to also be head clown 100% so he's putting on some goods this guy's a great eater it's good some great pied marking series of well balanced not too much white in them and once again tremendous potential I think he I don't know if he's enchy or not I, I wasn't sure I kind of put him down not as enchy but he could potentially be enchy as well He's got some really nice pattern, and once again, he's got some stuck shadow in his head. He's also, once again, 100% head clown, so if anyone's interested, let me know. Just kind of looking through the collection here at stuff that I haven't listed yet, because I'm too lazy, and I'm afraid that I don't want to let it go yet, but I know I have to, because <laughs> I got too many snakes. You know that a lot of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Look at this beautiful little girl. Super pastel. Spot nose, head clown. She could be possible leopard. I'm not sure if she's leopard or not. I, I gotta be honest with you, I'm really not sure. I'm gonna sell her as a possible leopard. She probably is, I'll probably cheat myself. She's gorgeous though. She's really a nice, nice looking female. You know, a lot of guys want to get spot nose into their clown projects, spot nose leopards. I love pastel and clown too, so. This girl definitely uh, is available here. She's really nice. Look at that head. Wow. You know, someone was asking me the other day if I had any Orange Dream Pinstripe Ultramels available. And I do, I have this mail from 20 still. I never saw him. I've been holding him back, I didn't know what to do with him. He's 100% head, or 66% head cryptic. Too. So that's Orange Dream, Pinstripe, Ultra Mel, 66% head cryptic. He's still here. If anyone's interested and wants to get into that project, let me know. I'll make you a good deal on this little boy. I can't, I can't, you know what? I can't let go of anything. I just love him so much. He's got such great coloration. He almost looks cryptic a little bit. That ear stripe is pretty big. I called him head cryptic though. It might be cryptic. Here's a really nice orange dream pinstripe cryptic head ultramel male that's producing sperm plugs, is ready to breed. Another one I held back just for backup, which I don't really need now. This is visual cryptic and orange dream pinstripe and then of course it's a hundred percent head ultra male really nice male if you guys are interested let me know this is a this is something you definitely can plug right into you into a project this year and produce some really nice stuff beautiful boy all right the other day i showed you the blackest img scoria that i've ever seen i'm going to show you the coolest img scoria now that i have and this is just super you can tell it's got the IMG in it. It's just not saturating the IMG, the Scoria like that other one I showed you the other day, did, which I've never seen happen. And usually this is what happens in, in IMG Scoria is the dark gets darker and it'll expand a little bit. And this, this stripe has expanded. It's gotten bigger. The tail has gotten darker and wider. The bands, the bands have gotten thicker too on this. I mean, they're really intense. This, this boy has got really, really high contrast because the dark is really dark, but the light stayed light. There's a little bit of dirtiness here from the, the, the black pigment coming in here from the IMG gene, increasing melanistic gene. But by and far, you can see all the little hieroglyphics that are on the scoria normally are just getting darker and darker. And he looks amazing. So, as I say, every scoria is different. And that goes for even when you put other genes in them. IMG just, responds differently in different scorias 
according to whatever genetically is going on with them, I guess. I almost wonder if there's like, I don't know, different lines of scories, but I don't think there is, but because some of them respond so differently and look so different. That's that's the that's what makes scories cool. That's why if you don't have a scory in your collection, everyone's gotta have some scories in this collection. You don't have to be a, a breeder of scories, but you gotta have a scory just if you're a boa person because they're just so so freaking cool. Alright, let's leave this guy alone. Alright, last snake of the day. IMG Motley VPIT positive. Maybe my favorite combination of all. I've shown this snake to you before. I love her. I just I can't get enough of her, to be honest with you. She's so beautiful, this thing. The combination of the Motley gene with the IMG and the VPIT positive. Because, you know, IMG and Motley want to make a, a black snake so bad. But the, I, the VPIT positive, which is a T positive albino, will not allow everything to turn black. And so you get this great contrast going. I, and you know I love contrast. Look at the tail, the striping. Just so, so cool. Look at that head. Look at that. Unbelievable. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. I hope you enjoyed all the snakes we showed you. You know, sometimes I just like to go through the racks and kind of just pull out cool stuff. Uh, look at some of the stuff I know I need to sell, but I haven't sold or listed yet. So, uh, if you guys, you know, a lot, I sell a lot of stuff just by doing little videos like this. People contact me and they're like, oh, I, yeah, I want that, you know, and then I make a deal with them and it never even gets listed because that's what happens with higher end stuff. You know, people want that, you know, right off the bat. And so if you guys see something that you like there, just hit me up and uh, we can make a deal on it. Uh, I, I shouldn't be, I, I keep too much stuff as we all do. And so I'm starting to move some stuff to make room for all the grow up stuff that I'm keeping from 2022 and all the stuff that I've held back over the last two years that now needs bigger containers. So I'm gonna be selling some a breeder of females as well. I have some, uh, I just listed a uh, beautiful killer clown, which is a super pastel clown. She's huge. If you guys want a great clown breeder, she's produced a bunch of good, great clutches for me. She might even be grabbing now, for all I know. <laughs> Cause I did have her with a male this year and I never got a clutch. So uh, you guys might get a bonus plan on that one. So check her out on Morph Market. Uh, for now, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Hit that like button. We'll see you back tomorrow morning. Happy Labor Day.